welcome back to Zoom Bath. Um, we're still working on the snake, so we're gonna get it all set up for you to show you what we're doing, or what we did, or what I did, or whoever did it. Somebody did it. <laughs> so let me get set up, and I'll show you right, what guys. we're gonna do. So sanded it down, kind of gave it a head, face head. Um, what we're gonna do here is it's gonna be a, I said a viper, but maybe it will still be a viper, but it's gonna be a tree viper, obviously, because it's nice and thin. You're talking about an inch and a half kind of all the way around so we're going to use our fordham because we still we ordered the slip the uh, flex shaft for the proxon so that will be in, oh, in about a week or so hopefully so this little chinese bit is it just has a, like an edge to it and what i'm going to do is show you i'm going to get a little bit under the snake to, to make it look like he's sort of pulled out okay so let's get at that As you can see, I don't know if you can see that. I can see it, but you probably can't. Um, we're going underneath it. So we got to do the whole snake. So um, I'll do that part and show you guys. So we're going to work on the eyes. So we got that bit I was telling you about. It's a rounded out bit. So we want to make our eyes round. So we don't need the fan or the, the vacuum on for this one. We're just going to do a little quick part of it. So what I want to do is get, it, get the eyes on there. And we're just going to go over the top. I'm just going to work the eye in. Mm -hmm. So all I want to do is like round it off. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to see the eyes a lot rounder. Mm -hmm. Basically, you want to have it so you have like a section of it pulled out. So we're gonna switch up our tape. Sort of see, I drew, or you could see the drew like an outline. So we're just gonna use this. Is, this is a saber tooth bit. I don't have a, a small taper bit for the cuts all. So all I want to do is basically get out some of the eye. The eye will be sticking out more. sand all that down so we'll do the other side so now that we have our eyes sticking out more what we need to do is just round it off so we just get the, the file and basically not the extreme part the lesser one. it's not as coarse I'm just gonna sort of even take much because we didn't take out very much wood just for the eyes to protrude the head and then I like to take my cut because it's a little bit it's a bit of a file and we're not touching the eye itself we're just touching all around it so we don't want to lose the roundness of the eye. It's a little bit harder for me to do this when I'm videotaping or when I'm recording because I'm trying to show you guys the angles and everything. Okay. I'm just going to switch. 
switch to another bit and I'll show you guys. We went and we put ourselves one of those little Chinese um, kind of burrs. This is like a sanding burr. It's more of a filing burr. So what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to smooth everything off. It's also going to allow us to make a little bit more of a groove in its face going up and down. So you want to sort of groove it inward like at the at same angle. So it slopes down. And this round burn is great for taking off spots that are, say, has little nicks on them. I can't really show you that because uh, you'd have to get really close to the camera. Just to clean up some of the places. Now that we have the face out, you can see the eyes, how they are. We're going to get into drawing the scales in, and then after that we go into the punches. The punches are going to be different. <clears throat> Usually, because this is not a... Um, this is not a snake that has, like, uh, the grooves as in, like... It doesn't have that scaling like that. These scales are almost rounded, oval rounded. So what I came up with is I have these older cheap punches. Just These are leather punches. And what we're doing with them is you can see that, well, they were supposed to be round at one time, but I'm trying to push in. You can see the, this is the bottom and this is the top. So I want to push the bottom in just a bit more so it almost looks like, it almost looks like a rounded piece. And I'll show you as an example here. What I'm trying to get at is having it to be rounded, but almost smaller at the bottom and rounded at the top. So the scale protrudes more to the back end than it is in the front. So almost like a, like a skull's head, we'll say. I'll try to draw this a little bit better something like that one okay so all I'm doing is uh, I heat up this piece and then I just take a little mallet and I just tap it gently so it squeezes in because this is a steel steel is hard to play with bend so um, I'll try to get that done and then we're gonna start on the scaling so let's let me draw up some of this and I'll show you where I'm at because it's a little bit a long process to draw uh, and then all I'm doing is using an image I'm just copying an image off of a snake and drawing the scales in for the face, the head, to a certain point, and after that, we tap in the rest of our scales with the punch. All right, All right guys, so we're going to throw in some scales now. So what we're using is a smaller and a larger punch. So what I did with these, these are uh, leather punches, and I just ovaled them more. I don't need them anymore. I'm just not going to use any leather. Um, so... Burnt in this, um, the front scaling piece. So we carved it and we burnt it in. And just to make it a little deeper. Now, this is about a um, four and a five millimeter scaling that I'm putting on here. One thing I noticed, or I just done myself, was figured out that doing it on the normal wood, it's hard to see. So what we're gonna do is take the torch and we are going to torch it first and then this way we can see where these actual lines we're going to burn the snake anyway so we take our torch and we give it a good little round a little, a little dark thing and you can see where i have already punched in the scalings gonna work all right so we'll just do a little bit here and there has to be stable so you really want to make sure you have something to hold it like a, a vice of sort we use in the, the jaw horse 
actually did it. Fly on us. And then I used some sort of cushioning at the bottom. What we did was we started off with small ones, the smaller one, the four mil, around the bottom. And then we went to a little bit larger. We'll go a little bit smaller in the middle. So working on the bigger ones. So basically, make sure you have it down there. And give it a good couple of taps. I just run it. And then you can see that they do come out a lot better. Um, let me see if I can get you down. So you can see that they're more visible when you're tapping than having to do it on just say the plain wood. So we have a lot of scaling to do, which will take a good couple hours. Um, I will get on to this and uh, we'll continue it. And then I'll show you some progression where I'm at. The scaling doesn't really change. Like I said, maybe a line of smaller ones uh, at the bottoms, a couple of top bigger ones, maybe a small one in the middle and then all the way to the end, all the way to the bottom. All right, so we'll get to it. And... So what well, usually would have taken me about, oh, about a week to burn. Basically the punches brought it in very fast. Like this took me maybe an hour to do the whole snake. Now there is little gaps, but that's fine because the smaller uh, punch could actually get in there and circle around it and it'll work. Now, how fast the punch works, um, hey, it's your speed. How deep you wanna go, that's up to you too. I just tap it with a, well, I use a you know, normal size hammer just to get those grooves in there. So uh, the next step is we're gonna finish, I'm gonna finish this little piece off here and then I gotta reburn it, and then a little bit of sanding, and then we'll be getting into the painting stage. All right. All right, guys. So after we gave it a quick, quick sand, what I like to do is take a clean rag and add some water to it. Get it nice and, nice and wet. And then we're just gonna wipe off the charred areas, get the black kind of off it because you want your paint oh look at that <laughs> like to wipe off the chart areas just to get the black off it so when it's uh when you're going to do the painting you're not painting over like a, like a charcoal so very simple and yeah the wood gets wet but you know what we're gonna go sit it out in the sun until we're ready for the next step so the next step now would be painting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call this part two. All right, guys. You can see it's been the face has been carved. The the scales are put in. And what I'm gonna do is actually take some masking tape, and I want to mask off the stick part, not the snake, so that when we paint, we don't just get oversprayed everywhere airbrush kind of finicky and stuff like that so stay tuned for part three that will be the airbrush stage of our snake all right all right guys thanks for watching like subscribe and share tip dry at the bottom um tools that we're using again these are just homemade punches they're leather punches i got very cheap at our Princess Auto out here, cuts all tools. We have a whole whack of them you can check out. Use the affiliate link, uh, RV Woodcraft in capitals. Uh, save yourself some you know, money, it's all good. And uh, let's get on to the next one. All right guys, thanks for watching.